Seismic PE prep example number three, let's get into it. A force is acting at the top of a building frame as shown, as you can see on the right. The supporting columns are of equal height and are fixed at their bases. The modulus of elasticity E is the same for each column. Assuming the top plate is rigid and uh, I1 equals one third of I2 equals one sixth of I3, I'll write that a little bit better. I just couldn't type that very, very neatly. What is the shear distribution to the first column? All right, and then we have some portion of force denoted as F, as you can see in blue. Let's, let's think at a high level about this. Like the problem says here, something very, very important is that uh, assume the top plate is rigid, which means that we can or need to analyze this big honking thing that I'm highlighting in red here as a rigid diaphragm. And we all know that rigid diaphragms distribute uh, story force or story shear to our vertical lateral elements, depending on the stiffness or the relative stiffness of each one of those vertical lateral elements. The vertical lateral elements, if I keep saying that, you're gonna kill me. For today's example are our three columns, column one, column two, and column three. So this is a kind of like a, maybe an inverted pendulum type uh, system that we have going on here. We know we have fixity at the base, and since we have uh, a rigid diaphragm at the top, we are also gonna assume that we are fixed at the top of our supports as well. So we have a fixed, fixed column condition. If you've seen uh, a couple of my other videos, we go through a bunch of different systems and the stiffness equations associated with those systems. It's a really great one, actually. It helped me tremendously in my SE studies. So check those out, I'll, uh, I'll link them above here. But we know that uh, for a fixed, fixed column condition, the stiffness of that system is found using the following equation. Uh, e being your modulus of elasticity, that's how how well a material can stretch. That comes down to material properties, um, mechanics of materials when you're in school. Your I, your moment of inertia for your shape, that depends on the geometry, the cross section of your column. And then H being the actual height of your column. So that's denoted as H. Well, today's example, we're not given any of that criteria, but we don't need it because something that's important to reiterate is that force distribution to each one of these columns is dependent upon the relative stiffness between the three columns. So as long as many of their properties are the same, you can actually cross out uh, a lot of the variables within the equation if you then, uh, in order to just give a solution in terms of F. So you're not giving a numerical value, but instead you're giving a proportion of your story force F. Well, why can, or how can we do that? Well, if we take this, we know that uh, E is the same for all. I'm just gonna do a check mark. H, all three columns are the same height. So that's a constant as well. And then I is our changing variable in our equation. And then 12 is just a numerical value, which is constant as well. I'm just gonna do 12, question mark, or question mark, check mark. So, what you can do is you can actually pull out 12 E over H cubed from your equation. And now, because that's all just constant, it's the same for all three of the columns. So you can just toss it, get rid of it. And we can simplify it to simply say, the stiffness of each column X is just equal to the difference of I's between the columns and we'll say I X. And we've been given the information on all of the I's uh, related to one another, which is an important thing, of the three columns. So that's great. I think something else that's important that I left out is the following figure that captures this whole equation here. And that looks like this. I always find, and as I'll mention again in, my, in one of my earlier videos when I was studying for the SE, making these figures next to the appropriate stiffness and uh, deflection equations really helped me solidify my understanding of this concept. Um, so I always like to draw just a really simplistic figure that relates to the equation. In order to get a percentage of force to each of the columns, we need to have a total stiffness of the three columns summed together. That we'll call K sub T for total stiffness of the system. 
that's equal to K1 plus K2 plus K3, three stiffnesses of the three columns. And F sub X, the force that you're trying to find at any one of the three columns, is simply equal to the stiffness of the column that you want over the total stiffness of the system uh, multiplied by your total force. All right, that's two equations. And now we know that we can take our third equation up here and we know that stiffness with everything boiled out of it is just equal to the I of each column. And we were given that criteria, so let's list them out. K1 is just equal, we'll call it one, just unitless one. K1 is equal to K2 over three. Another way to write that is just that K2 is equal to three K1, so it's three times as stiff as column one. And then we we're given a third bit of information. K1 is also equal to K3 over six. And another way to write that one is K3 is equal to six K1, or K3 is six times as stiff as column one. We can simply plug everything in and say KT is equal to K1, which is one, plus K2, which is three times uh, the stiffness of K1. So that's three times one equal to three, plus K3, which is six times the stiffness of one, which is one times six. And that all dumps out a total system stiffness of 10. Again, unitless, we stripped out a lot of these variables, so the units all disappear. It's just relative stiffness. Um, because we're just finding, at the end of the day, a fraction, and then uh, associating that with the total story force, and that gives you a percentage of force that goes to each one of these columns. That's it. And now we can use this equation to find our final answer. F1 is equal to uh, Kx in question, so K1, which is just one, over k total, which is 10, times a story force f, which gets us f over 10 as our final answer. So one tenth of the story force is going to be distributed to column one um, to take that story demand down to the base through that column. I'm gonna say today that means our answer is A. And if you're flying through this and you're in the exam or you come back and you have some time to kind of solidify this for yourself, think about it at a high level. Um, the stiffer an object is, or a, a, you know, a system is, the more load will be sucked to that system. So when you have something that's really, really stiff, most of the load should be going to that, not should be, will be going to that. That's just how, how t the, the rules of engineering work. And if you, and vice versa, if you have a very, very a uh, non-stiff system, like a wobbly, really thin column, call it a piece of spaghetti, no load is going to go to that because it has no relative stiffness compared to the system. So as you come to realize that your column one is you know, three times less stiff than column two and six times less stiff than column three, you are going to realize, hey, not a lot of load is ultimately gonna go to that column. So the fraction is going to be fairly small. So from these answers, I might say, well, F over three, that's, in, that's a pretty big amount that would go to that column. That can't be true. Uh, two thirds is also, you know, that's the biggest amount of load going to the column. It can't be that one. And then you're left with, you know, two possible solutions left that make sense just without even running any calculations. So something to think about there high level. But hey, that'll do it for today. Like, subscribe, do everything to push this content to other engineers going through the process of studying for whatever exam they may be studying for. And uh, until next time, this is Rich with Team Kestova. Peace.